Hi, I'm State Representative Daryl Metcalf. I, I hear you. I understand there's some hard feelings with Penn. Representative Dye. Bradford, yes. just look, I'm a heterosexual. I have a wife. I love my wife. I don't like men, as you might, but don't stop touching me all the time. <laughs> so I keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> like, if you want to touch somebody, you have people on your side of the aisle that might like it. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Chairman. Chairman. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> okay. We're officially off the rails. So let me throw out a, a, a simple idea. I, uh, my, my intent was just to, to beg for your permission for about 30 seconds. Then beg. Uh, don't uh, touch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where we go from here, really. As Pennsylvanians join together to celebrate the landmark decision for same-sex marriages, others say their fight isn't over. The citizens of Pennsylvania should have the opportunity to make that choice, um, that it should not be a judge that's making that for the whole population. That's why State Representative Daryl Metcalf says voters should define marriage through a referendum. He's proposed House Bill 1349 for a constitutional amendment to define marriage as between one man and one woman. It's been that way throughout history. Hi, I'm State Representative Daryl Metcalf. The whining left has reached a new low. First disruptive paid protesters, now an unhinged state representative. On June 13th, as chairman of the House State Government Committee, I convened a voting meeting to advance legislation that would crack down on illegal alien sanctuary cities. I informed my fellow representatives that a vote for this legislation is an easy vote for any patriotic American. My straightforward comments sent the Democrats off the rails. After we voted party line to advance the legislation, an angry Philadelphia Democrat legislator ran up to me and proceeded to throw his papers at me. Crimson faced and emotionally unhinged, he launched into a verbal tirade. After the meeting, he went straight to my office and told my secretary that she worked for a, quote, bigot. When I later passed by him on the House floor, he called me an ignorant racist bigot. First, we're going to receive her testimony. Chairman, you, I'm you, sure, you, were, you, were, you were noticed through our notice, through the agenda being sent out, who was testifying today. And if, this, if you had an issue, you should have brought it to me before well, this moment. So we're not going to be interrupted right now, and we're going to continue. Chairman, if you look at her Excuse me, Representative Bullock, you're out of order. Please come to order. Chairman, you've got to run the meeting. Representative Bradford, you are out of order. Come to order. Chairman, you can't be Representative Bradford, members. you are out of order. Ch Chairman, you're yelling at a lady. I wish you would. Representative Bradford, I'm, I'm not yelling at anybody. I'm telling you you're out of order. Please stop talking into the microphone now so we can receive our testimony. Ms. Kearns. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity. Parliamentary inquiry. There is no opportunity for a parliamentary inquiry. We are receiving testimony, Representative Rabb. Yes, please I stop. realize that. Representative Rabb, you're out of order. Please come to order. Chairman, Chairman, you've just provided this testimony. I am going to ask security to remove anybody who's disrupting no, this committee. No, that's not going to happen. That you're is going to no happen, one is Representative Rabb. No removing any member Representative of the Rabb. Pennsylvania General Assembly because you don't like it. You can gavel Rabb, all day. Representative Rabb, you are day. out of order. You're not going to intimidate me. Representative Rabb, you're not being intimidated. You are out that's of true. order. You're a member you're of this General right. Assembly. And you will operate under you the, are not under the rules any of this general assembly of this legislature. I would ask security to Chairman, please Chairman. assist Representative Rabb if he's not going to come to order. Chairman, the they know their jobs. They the know they're not allowed. The, the speaker and the speaker alone has that power. That's right. Please don't use powers you don't have. Representative Bradford and Representative Rabb, you both should check with the speaker's office. I am the chairman. I am convening this meeting. I have authority to rule over this hearing. I would ask you as to the chair. With the speaker. Representative Bradford and Rab, you will both come to order now, and we are going to receive testimony, and then, then you can, then you can, uh, then we can possibly entertain questions in the future. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we'll ask security to I, I, please assist security. Just hold, hold, hold still. Representative Bradford, you come to order now, and motion. I'm not going to ask again. Please continue the testimony. Let's have a sidebar, Chairman. Hi, I'm State Representative Daryl Metcalf. This week, for the first time, I asked to speak under personal privilege, which is used to respond to an attack on a legislator's reputation. On the floor of the State Senate, a legislator attempted to vilify me by repetitively referring to me as a bully because of my call to impeach the Attorney General. The Senator launched a blatant personal attack in response to the judicious choice I made to propose we exercise our legislative duty as provided for in the Pennsylvania Constitution. Frankly, Mr. Speaker, his conduct was truly unbecoming of a member of this esteemed legislative body. Mr. Speaker, a bully is someone who uses a position of strength 
or power to impose his or her will on someone of a weaker status in an unjust manner. The speaker. The bully preys on someone who is speaker. weaker with the intent to commit gentleman an injustice. Suspend. Speaker. A bully is what, not it, someone. Will the who, gentleman the, suspend? The, will the gentleman, Mr. Benkat, please say, the gentleman, Mr. Dermy, have a further parliamentary inquiry? Yes, Mr. Speaker. May state it. Mr. Speaker, I believe that the gentleman is using personal privilege to attack another person's character instead of defending his own. If he's going to defend his own, yeah. fine. Yeah. Gentlemen. But a couple of years ago, when this controversy arose surrounding the current president's birth certificate, I started researching this issue with my office and found that no, our law did not provide for that due diligence to take place during the process. I think that it's important for integrity of our process, that it's important for instilling voter confidence that the voters have a right to know that the person they're voting for is constitutionally eligible to hold that office. A ho-hum House State Government Committee. Republican the, uh, Chair Darrell Metcalf on the left, the Democrat Chair Babette Josephs on the right. Darrell asked Babette to lead the pledge. She refuses. Off, I could uh, ask everyone to rise so we can say the pledge and could ask uh, Representative Josephs to uh, lead us in the pledge. Thank you. I do not pledge the flag of the allegiance based on my First Amendment rights and the fact that I really think it's a prayer and I don't pray in public. There are some around the Capitol questioning Darrell Metcalf's motives. He knows Babette Josephs does not say the pledge. So why publicly call on her to do so? The man's inscrutable to me. I don't know what he's so angry about. I don't know why he's so angry at me. I don't get the whole thing. Ask him. And I've never asked the minority chair to say it. Um, it was an opportunity for her to, uh, to say the pledge. If she chose not to, that was on her.